Hey everyone, this is Zach with Sweet CG. I have a new update video for you uh, that is going to cover our newest changes uh, to our baseball softball user interface. Uh, work is almost done on our uh, team rosters and player selection features. So you'll be seeing more about that uh, soon. Uh, in the meantime, though, we redid our baseball softball user interface based on feedback from uh, current users. And we feel that this is going to be a lot easier to use. So I want to give a uh, informal uh, tutorial on this. And then once our team rosters are complete uh, and the player selection feature, then we plan on going back and doing uh, more formal uh, training videos on all of the different sport user interfaces, uh, as well as uh, continue uh, adding more sport uh, user interfaces for things like hockey and lacrosse and darts and, and all the other sports that uh, people have been requesting. So um, for the meantime, uh, this will just serve as a informal uh, training on baseball. And uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to contact me. Uh, all right, so I'm here in the team tab. Uh, I've opened a baseball template file. Um, I've also already loaded in uh, a marquee file and a sponsor file just for the heck of it. Uh, I have not imported uh, a graphics project yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And as a reminder, uh, these can be found in the C colon backslash sweet CG backslash multi-sport scoreboard folder. And then we have different folders for sponsors, marquees, uh, graphics projects. And then once the team uh, roster feature is ready, we will have the ability for you to uh, import and export team profiles that would include uh, the roster information. So I am going to come over here to projects and select the baseball score bug. All right, so I'm going to show the score bug here. And then I'm going to come over to the game status tab. And then uh, for the heck of it, I'm going to get the uh, marquee going. There we go. OK, so our baseball softball user interface um, it consists of three different sections. Over here on the left, we have uh, all of the, the batting team and all of the different um, uh, options that could happen uh, during a pitch. Um, over here on the right, we have uh, really just one button, and that's uh, going to be well, two buttons uh, eventually. Um, to reset the pitch count for the pitcher, um, which uh, can happen later in the game, um, as well as the ability to select uh, the pitcher from the roster file uh, once that feature is done. Um, and then over here in the center, we have this representation of the field where you can select uh, bases um, if there's a, a runner gets uh, to home plate, then you can mark a run. Um, if there's an error by the fielding team, or if there's an out, uh, if the batter gets out while trying to get to the base, um, or if a runner uh, going from like first base to second base gets out, you have that option too. And all these different buttons do different uh, different things uh, as, as macro buttons. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, let's take a look at the ball button. Um, I'm going to click that once. Let's say there's a pitch and uh, it was a ball. So you can see here now that the pitcher has one pitch and then the balls equals one. So I'm going to do that again and two and three. And when it hits three, you're going to see that this button changes uh, to a walk button. And you'll notice this button as well as some of these other buttons down here uh, some of them have this little looping back arrow, which is a reset for the ball count. And then some of them also have this little black diamond, which represents uh, automatically activating first base. So let's say that this first uh, batter got a walk. 
And once you hit that, you'll notice first base is now highlighted in red here. And over here on the score bug, you can see that that base is also lit up. Uh, furthermore, uh, the pitches are now at four and the count has been reset. Now let's say um, the next batter uh, got a hit. They hit the ball and nothing really, it doesn't look like anything happened uh, because um, there were no balls or strikes there. Um, however, you'll see down here uh, where it says uh, H for hits, um, that that has increased to one. And then furthermore, on the score bug, you can show uh, runs, hits, and errors on this little um, option that kind of shoots out, stays there for a couple seconds, and then goes back. Uh, and likewise, if there's an error, you can click those, and you'll see errors for the other team there, and as well as there. Uh, so I'm going to uh, say we've got um, for the next batter we have two uh, two balls there. So um, then let's say the uh, hitter reaches on an error. So that's going to reset the count and then also set first base to true. Uh, what that means for us, you can see all those numbers reset to zero. However, we already had a player at first base, so it was already set to true. And hitting that again for that um, the reach on error, we'll just set it to true again. You'll have to manually select second base for the run for the runner that was was on first now advances to second. Um, furthermore, if uh, the batter was hit by the pitch, um, that will perform the same thing and activate um, first base automatically. If there's a foul, that's going to increment the strikes until you get two strikes. And you see there's two strikes here. And now this button has changed to two strike foul. And the strike button has changed to a third strike. So if there's a two strike foul, that increases the pitches, but does not do anything with the strikes. If there is a third strike, then things uh, change up a little bit. So you'll see that that resets the count, but a few other things happen here. Resets the count, outs is now at one, and then this button to uh, activate the toggle for the outs indicator highlights in red. So it gives you an indicator that you need to click that. Once that's clicked, the border will go away. If you unclick it, it will go back to red. Now let's say uh, for the next, uh, next batter, uh, someone tries to steal third, the second baseman tries to steal third and they get out. Well, now we're at two. Now this has been highlighted to uh, activate. And then you would need to manually deselect second base. Let's say the batter gets uh, out at bat, or I'm sorry, out um, while trying to get to uh, base. And now that that has set us to three so outs, um, all of the buttons in the user interface have grayed out. They're no longer active, except for these two. If So if it's the end of the game, then you would click final. Uh, but if it's the game's still in progress, then you would just click this button here to proceed to the bottom of the current inning. It will ask you for confirmation. And then you'll see everything swaps. Um, and then all the buttons do the same things, except this one will now advance you to the next inning uh, and to the top of the next inning. So that's what we've got there. Um, a couple other things here with the graphics package. Uh, a couple things you can do here. You can do a line score um, that, and if you right click that, you'll see the seven here. That means it will display for seven seconds. 
Um, you can right click all these different buttons to show some different options on the uh, score bug. And then we also have for our line score uh, in between uh, half innings. You can show that, and if the game is done, you can always click Final. And uh, then the line score will show Final. And if you accidentally click that, you can always uh, undo that. So that's what we got. If you have any questions, uh, give us uh, contact us through the website. Um, and uh, it's free to download. Uh, this version is live now, so free to feel free to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Thanks.